Hello everybody, this is me, Chap Commander Coffee, and I will be doing my very first Let's Play ever of my favourite strategy game of all time. Uh, until someone makes a better one, which will be quite a long time I imagine. Minions 4, Thrones of Ascension. I thought, given that this is my first Let's Play that I will be posting on YouTube, I should do something a little bit more unique. So I'm going to go over a few things before I start. Uh, I'm not going to be doing this as a tutorial sort of let's play, so I won't be explaining all of the mechanics or the basics of the game. If enough people are interested I might end up doing a more tutorial-esque series, but I'm just going to get stuck in and try to do some crazy stuff just to show off some fun things about this game. It's, it's really, really a unique title, and I think if you've never seen Dominions 4, before, uh, don't be put off. It can be quite complicated, but hey, it's really fun. So I'm going to go over the mods that I'll be using. Uh, I'm going to be running AI No Recruit. Uh, the AI basically prefers to recruit natural units over independence with this, uh, which it's going to be very important for another mod that I'm running, which I'll explain uh, later. The Demi Lich replacement mod, which I never really use the Demi Lich uh, as a pretender very often. Uh, this is supposed to make him more powerful. I don't know if I'll actually use him, and there's a reason for that, which I'll go into again. Um, but yeah, it's it's there. I mean, he looks cooler. He's a throne-bound lich instead of a pile of bones, which I, I kind of like the uh, the idea of a bit more. Uh, Magic Enhance, which just changes some of the spells, it adds new spells, adds loads of new craftable items. I just find this... it adds a lot more variety to the game. It's a, it's a brilliant mod. I highly recommend it. Uh, some odd which changes some of the summons, adds in some new summons. Again, it's, it's a sort of a balanced mod as well. It's really nice. Uh, I highly recommend this with Magic Enhance. They're both very good mods uh, for enhancing most of Minions gameplay. It's good stuff. Uh, the mod that matters the most though, however, is this one. Nation Gen Roulette 40. Uh, Nation Gen basically generates random nations for Dominions 4. Completely random. Uh, random rosters of wizards, commanders, um, and units, as well as your race, and all things like that. It's very, very interesting. Uh, I think it makes the game infinitely replayable. And to make this first Let's Play a bit more unique, I decided to do 40 random nations. I have no idea what they have in their rosters at, at all. It is early ages with high-powered sacreds, or like the, the very highest powered sacreds available. So we should see some really crazily overpowered sacreds in this game. And uh, I find sometimes when you put Nation Gen on very high-powered sacreds, some of them aren't that impressive still, so... Yeah, it's more to balance out and hopefully get some more interesting sacreds. So let's just create a game. I'm going to be playing on uh, Valanis. I really like this map. This is probably one of my favourite maps. I just like the style of it. It's just a really nice artistic style. Also, because wraparound maps, uh, the maps that can... Uh, you can cross, you can basically scroll the screen all the way around, both north and south, uh, east and west. I can find them a bit disorientating to see borders, uh, especially on the smaller wraparound maps, they can get really confusing for me. So I like I like the, uh, the sort of static square, square map, it's nice. Um, we have, let's play Random 40. We're gonna do, it's early ages only. Uh, I'm going to have 11 difficult AI, including myself, which is the maximum number of AI for this map. Um, difficult AI get slight bonuses to their income and their production and their points when they're uh, creating their god. So it might be a little bit too much of an advantage for me to handle. <laughs> I'm not the best Dominions 4 player, but it, I should be fine. Should be fine. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah. That uh, should be fine. And we are playing as Saltnoham, the Hill of Fire, uh, a race of Vatis, which are forest goblins from the Jotunheim uh, faction in the base game, the vanilla game. So a race of goblins with some humans. We prefer cold scale too, so we prefer living in cold lands. Our military is made of light infantry. Uh, two kinds of hunters and sacred light infantry. 
So very cheap units, which is pretty much to be expected with goblins being our main race. Our magic is fire and blood with weak earth, with some austral human mages. Now austral humans, I believe, are the uh, sort of African culture giants. They are based off Machaka. I think it includes the Austral includes Pygmies, Colossi from Beratos, and the Machakan humans. So yeah, they're sort of an African uh, or Indonesian island, I guess, kind of culture. Yeah, it could be interesting. If we get Colossi mages, then I might be able to make some thugs. Colossi mages would be pretty powerful. Uh, and moderate strength priests, which means we should have access to level 2 priests. Which is, yeah, that's pretty useful. Level 2 priests are not... They, ha they have a uh, Sermon of Courage, which is quite a nice uh, ability. So, I don't actually know which god is going to be useful for this team. Uh, we have the... Uh, it looks like we have the Celtic god lineup. Uh, that's the Throwbound Lich here. Throwbound Lich from that mod. Um, hmm... Now, Fire and Blood is... None of the Celtic Gods are really very good with Fire and Blood. I mean, I could take a Fire Dragon. Hmm. Now, I'm thinking... We have... Sacred Light Infantry. They're not Sacred Archers. Hmm. But... Lots of, of Hunters. And I assume they are Archers. So, having someone who can cast flaming arrows. I mean, we have fire magic, so I might want to give my god fire magic 4 so he can craft uh, the flaming helmets to boost fire magic. Hmm. And dragons are very good for early expansion. And later on they can shape change into an arc mage for spell casting. So Hmm. I could also take any of the uh, other other pretenders. I won't go through all the pretenders. I'm just thinking about what might be useful for my team. I mean, I could either take diversity or I could take an awake pretender. I don't think going heavy on a bless would be dangerous, given that I only have sacred light infantry, and I don't know what they're equipped with. Hmm. In fact, all my units seem to be very light. Light infantry, light infantry. And as goblins, that means they should be fairly cheap. But we're going to need a lot of them, because goblins are weak. So, we're going to need a lot of units. Which means I probably want to take half-decent scales, at least for income. So I want to, and as a blood nation, I most certainly want growth. Hmm. Nature and blood might be quite useful. Gaining access to nature magic. I don't know what my fourth magic is going to be. It could be nature. Fire and blood, weak earth. Well, earth means I should probably take at least earth too. Hmm. It's difficult decisions to be made here. Who do we want as lord of our goblins? Or god of our goblins? Hmm. I'm kind of tending towards taking a dragon. An awake dragon. Yeah, sure, let's take an awake dragon. Um, the dragon's pretty powerful. I think, yeah. The fire... The fire should be, uh... Four fire means he can cast flaming arrows and firestorm and things like that. It also gives a small attack bonus bless to my, uh, sacred light infantry. Might make them more useful. Uh, I don't really want to go for flaming weapons. I don't know how useful that will be with my um, my sacred units. I don't know what my uh, roster of units is yet, so I don't want to invest too heavily in something that might not work. So I think we'll go for fire magic, for flaming arrows and crafting uh, flaming skulls, uh, or flaming helmets. Hmm. We definitely want him to be awake so he can take provinces in the early game. We'll go for three cold. It's kind of annoying we have a cold dominion with fire magic. It makes our fire magic less powerful. 
But um, if we attack someone else's dominion and they have uh, heat, then our fire magic will be more more powerful. So it, it has its ups and downs. I might have to focus on using uh, blood magic inside of our own dominion and then using fire magic to attack other people. Might have to do that. Um, I'm going to boost my dominion to... Hmm. Now sacred light infantry means they're going to be very cheap. And with an awake pretender, I mean, having high dominion will give him awe. Awe makes him much stronger. I mean, fear and awe will make him practically impossible to kill. So, maybe even 10 dominion. So I can start recruiting lots of these sacred light infantry if they are quite cheap. Then my... Hmm. I could take sloth. All my units seem to be light infantry, which means I won't need many resources. So I think sloth is fine. I don't want to take free sloth because then I'll get really bad events because I have free sloth. Um, order is good for a uh, blood hunting nation, but I do like to take turmoil and combo it with luck. And the events, you know, events are kind of fun, and we're goblins. Like, I feel goblins would have turmoil, not order, especially with blood magic. Like, blood magic does seem like a turmoil kind of thing. I wish more of the demons had like chaos power and things like that. So that turmoil was more encouraged on blood nations instead of always going for order, but never mind. I'll take I'll take turmoil to be a bit more interesting. And we're gonna need growth. I'll take two growth. Um, and one point in magic. Yeah, it seems fine. Alright. Name of our god. Our fire dragon. The fire dragon of Salt No Ham. Um Salt No Ham. Apparently our goblins would prefer that you didn't salt your ham. <laughs> hmm. Oh, I'm pretty bad at naming gods, so I'm, I'm just going to let it random a name. Uh, Solve, Solve. I think it's just Solve. All praise Solve. Soul for God of Salt, I am. Uh, I'm going to put magic research to difficult. I think in a single player game it makes the game a bit longer, and generally single player games are going to be longer anyway, so it might encourage me to use my armies a bit more efficiently as well, think about my strategy a bit more uh, in depth. Uh, I'm going to have 15 Hall of Fame entries, just have loads of heroes, why not? Uh, keep all these the same. And Thrones of Ascension. We are going to have victory by Thrones of Ascension. Um, there are 12 players, so we're going to have 12 Ascension points required. And we'll have double those many points. We'll have 10 level 1 Thrones. We'll have one, um, maybe one like fabled level 3 Throne. And then... Hmm. have 11 level 1 thrones, 5 level 2 thrones, and 1 level 3 throne. That should give us a nice variety, and it'll make this level 3 throne quite powerful. Whatever it is, it will give a very large bonus if we capture it. Seems good. Do you need to own half the points? Hmm. Might just take, yeah, maybe just slightly over half points. Slightly over half the points. And that should be good. And I will probably end the episode here. Uh, next episode, I will be going over our unit roster and thinking about potential strategies that we can do. Um, I've already sort of vaguely talked about flaming arrows, but that's because it appears we have a lot of archers and goblins are, are cheap. They're like Bakumono, so kind of, kind of how Yomi Yomi does its fire arrows, with many many cheap archers firing many many flaming arrows. It's actually quite effective. So I'll leave that for the next episode. See you next time.